Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the new gear that I picked up recently, the Mamiya RB67 Pro SD. I just want to preface by saying that all of my opinions are coming from a person who's been shooting digitally for 10 years now. And I've got to say that coming from this and moving to this, not completely, um, has been a really nice experience. I picked this camera up about a month ago and before that I rented a Mamiya RB67 Pro S from a company called Film Objective and I rented out that camera for about a month so I could test drive what it would be like to own a camera like this. A medium format camera with a waist level viewfinder such like that. I'll talk about that in a second. So let's start off with the first impressions. One of the first things that I wanted to talk about is its fully metallic body. Now there's this camera, the Mamiya RB67, and there's another one called the Mamiya RZ67. Now if you go on any like film channels on YouTube now, a lot of them use the RZ67. It's a very nice camera, super modern, it was released in the 2000s, or the latest version at least, and it looks really sleek. The experience is really nice, and it's a very modern camera, but this is made in the 80s or 90s, and the fully metallic body gives me a lot of peace of mind that I can set it down anywhere that I want, whether it's on concrete, dirt, or a wooden stool like this, although you shouldn't be setting it anywhere. Uh, it gives me a lot of peace of mind that it won't get scratched up, that I won't have to worry about the plastic degrading, like the RZ67, it's made of plastic. It's lighter, but this right here, a fully metallic body feels so good in the hand since I like a lot of weight when I'm shooting. Now. That first point, the whole metallic body, leads me into my second point, which is all the functions in this camera are fully mechanical. Now the fully updated counterpart, the RZ, is half electronic, half mechanical, and there is a chance that those old electronics in that camera could break. It could fail, and once those things fail, then you can't use the camera at all. It locks up, zero function, then you gotta go take it to the store, and it's very expensive. Now this camera is older, and it does have a chance of breaking, but since it's fully mechanical, you can easily go to any film retailer or camera retailer who specializes in film, and they could take it in for a week or two, and then they can give it back right to you, CLA'd, and you are on your way again. It should be affordable, and it should be easy for them to repair as well. Now with those combined things that I just talked about, that's why I prefer getting the RB67 over the RZ67. The RZ67 is very hyped right now. It's a very sleek camera. It has one lens that is unique to the RZ system, which is the 110mm f2.8. In the RB system, there is no 2.8 lens. The fastest you can go is 3.5, and you might be thinking, oh, that is a little slow, and in some scenarios, it is a little slow. But 2.8 is nice, but I personally don't think right now in my film career that it's worth it to invest in something that's more expensive, about $500 more expensive than this, and it has a higher chance of failing, so I'd rather get an RB67 Pro SD that is fully mechanical, fully metal body, and no chance of failing electronically. Now I think the most important part of any film camera to talk about is the experience of using it. All of them pretty much do the same thing. The only thing that varies in the picture is... Oh, I chose this camera for a multitude of reasons, the first one being the waist level viewfinder. You get a waist level viewfinder attachment for some medium format cameras if they don't come stock with one, but for this camera itself, I can't get this sort of experience with a digital camera. With my Canons, I have to use the viewfinder or I can use live view on the back. For the EOS R, it has a flip out screen so I can shoot waist level, but something about this makes it very different and it looks a lot better in the viewfinder than it does in real life so that's a very interesting thing a con about the waist level viewfinder is the fact that i can't hold it up to my eye to take a photo i have to look down and hold it to my chest or my waist and because i'm a shorter person the angle of my portraits are a little bit lower they could look a little bit mm, not so good but i can have the subject sit down and we're good to go from there. And there's something unique about the experience of taking a photo of someone without having my face obstructed by the camera. Now I am looking down and I can't talk to someone, but once I look up, there's something different about that kind of interaction that makes this feel very unique. Now there is a workaround for that problem of being too low because I have this accessory called the eye level viewfinder. I can easily switch it out and then I can start to hold the camera up to my face. It is still a little lower than a traditional SLR camera, but it works. The second thing that I wanna talk about is the fact that this camera is loud. A 
That sounds really good. And the mechanism of resetting the mirror is very fun. You probably recognize that sound from the beginning of this video and another video that I did regarding film. I recorded it straight from the back of this camera. And there you have it. The other cool thing about this camera is in its name itself. RB stands for rotating back. This cartridge right here is interchangeable and it can rotate like so. So you're actually changing the orientation of the film instead of changing the orientation of the camera when you want to take a portrait or a landscape. Instead, you could just rotate the camera and now you're in portrait. Rotate the back and now you're in landscape. That is an incredible feature, especially if you have a waist level viewfinder and you don't have an eye level viewfinder and you want to take a portrait, it would be super sucky to take a photo like this and have to look through like that. Some people do do that and they're very talented in doing some very creative, but just the peace of mind that I could rotate it and now I'm in portrait is so cool. Now the second function of this part is that I could change it out. Now in here is a film stock, is a portrait 160 expired VC and if I don't want to shoot that, then I get another one and I can slap on. I don't own another one, they're kind of expensive, but you have that capability with the RB and the RZ system. With traditional film cameras, once you load up the back of the film stock, you obviously know you have to finish it before you want to switch it out. But with the RB, if you own multiple backs of the camera, then you could load one up and say like, oh, it's too sunny, it's too harsh, I want to shoot black and white, flip it out and you're ready to go. And for portrait sessions, if you want to shoot a more saturated film stock or a desaturated film stock, you have that freedom to do so. Now let's talk about why I chose to invest in medium format film. Now back in the film days, before digital cameras like reached 30 megapixels like this EOS R that I'm filming on right now, medium format film negatives had crazy big resolutions. Look at the size of these negatives. They are fat. They're maybe two times more than a 35 millimeter negative. So the resolution is great, but now nowadays in 2020, like we have 46 megapixel cameras, we have 100 megapixel cameras now, and it's crazy. Why would anybody want to shoot film? How can this beat a 30 megapixel camera? My EOS R can clearly kill any medium format film negative in the resolution game, but that's not the reason why I shoot medium format. It might've been back in the day, but now what I really like about medium format is the look of it. I use a 90 millimeter F3.5 lens on this camera. 90 millimeters on a full frame digital camera is really tight, really punched and great for portraits. I have an 85 millimeter for the Canon and it's perfect for portraits. But the cool thing about medium format is that it has that compression that you love for portraits, but then it expands the field of view by two times. So if it's a 90 millimeter lens, the field of view is actually 45 millimeters. It's super cool. But for any focal length on a six by seven medium format camera, you just have to multiply it by one half and that's the field of view that you get. So it's really nice that you get the compression of 90 millimeters, but the field of view of 45. It's not the same as shooting on a regular 45 millimeter lens on a regular full frame camera. It's not the same. So that's kind of like a short explanation of the medium format look. It's hard to explain. You should go rent a camera or borrow your friend's medium format camera and experience it for yourself and you will completely understand what I'm talking about. Thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment of what you think about medium format film photography, especially if you're a digital photographer, I would love to know how you feel about it. And click subscribe for more content. We're all trapped indoors now, so I'm gonna be pushing a lot more content. And as a bonus, I'll just throw up more photos that I took on this camera. And thank you guys for watching. Stay safe out there. Let me explain the now let me explain the camera mm, now let me explain the mirror in this camera is huge just a peace of mind that i could just rotate it and now oh.